Welcome back, everyone. Uh, let's take a look at an example of computing the volume of solid revolution using the disk method. Um, and to describe the solid in question, take the following region you can see uh, bounded between the x-axis and this parabola, uh, f of x equals 4 minus x squared. And let's rotate this around the x-axis and consider the following solid revolution. And try, try, to, try to visualize this in your mind here. I mean, the, the region you can see here, and uh, I would recommend as you're trying to work through these examples and exercises on your own, draw, draw the picture of the two-dimensional region. It can be very difficult to, to draw or even visualize the three-dimensional region if you can appreciate the, the three-dimensional solid, excuse me. Um, if you can at least see the two-dimensional region that forms uh, the solid, that can be very helpful in understanding exactly what it is you're trying to compute. Um, so, I mean, this one, when you get rotated, um, it's going to make somewhat of like a football-like shape um, with this parabola. Y equals 4x minus 4 minus x squared. Uh, this is going to be, you, you take your standard parabola, but it's going to be reflected downward, and then you shift it up by 4, uh, which you see right here. Now, in this situation, you'll notice that um, if we're going to try to find the volume using the disk method, remember, your volume, you would take the integral from A to B, of pi r squared dx, the radius of the disk is r here, and dx is the thickness of a single disk here. Um, we have to also know the boundaries. A equals a, a equals, or x equals a, x equals b. What are the bounds right here? Now with the picture, we can see very clearly that we're looking for these values right here. Uh, we need to find the x-intercepts of this, of this region here. And so we, we're looking for when f of x which is 4 minus x squared, when this equals 0. Um, there's a couple ways you could solve this. You could solve it by factoring. Uh, by You know, you could solve it for x. Uh, you could use the quadratic formula. Any of those are pretty good. I mean, quadratic formula seems like overkill on this one. Um, and 4 minus x squared, this looks like a difference of squares factorization to me. Uh, so we get x minus, or 2 minus x and 2 plus x as our factors. And so our x-intercepts will be plus or minus 2. Um, and so we're going to integrate this from negative 2 to 2 pi r squared. Well, well, we'll plug in the r in just a second. I want to pause for a moment and do make a comment here that notice your bounds. Your upper bound is a 2 and your lower bound is a negative 2. This is a symmetric interval. Uh, it's symmetric, meaning that the distance you go to the right of the, of the y-axis is the same as you go from the left. And when it comes to integrals involving symmetric bounds, there's two things you should remember about this. So remember, if you go integrate from negative a to a and you integrate an odd function, that's always going to equal zero. Uh, absolutely, because the area above the x-axis is equal and opposite to the area below the x-axis, so the net area will be zero. Now, for a problem like this, uh, the volume of this of this football-like shape is not zero, so it's not we're not going to be getting an odd function. On the other hand, if we take the integral from negative a to a of an even function, remember even functions are those functions which are symmetric with respect to the x-axis, this should equal two times the integral from zero to a of that same even function, right? And so given the symmetry of the, of the region here, the, how it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, the solid of revolution will likewise be symmetric. And so we actually do anticipate to have this even symmetry appearing inside of, of this situation right here. Um, and so let's proceed back to the integral. I erased some of it, whoops. Negative two to two pi times the radius. How big is the radius, right? The radius of the disc, you can draw these cross-sectional rectangles right here to see what does a typical cross-section look like. And so the height of this rectangle right here is gonna be the radius of the disk you're looking for. And notice that we're just looking for the distance between the x-axis and the function. That's just going to be the y-coordinate. So if you have this point right here, x comma y, we're just looking for that y-coordinate, uh, which the y-coordinate is given as y equals 4 minus x squared. Um, and so then we get 4 minus x squared as our radius. We square it and we get a dx right there. All right. And so as I prove Predicted, this is in fact uh, an even function. If you were to replace x with negative x, this thing doesn't change whatsoever. And so for the sake of simplicity, what I'm going to do is actually double half of the volume. So I'm going to calculate the volume from 0 to 2 of the same function, pi times 4 minus x squared, 
squared dx. And so the reason I'm doing this mostly comes from the fact that later on I have to plug in the number zero or negative two. Zero is always much easier arithmetic, so I'm gonna prefer using symmetry just to make the arithmetic simpler. It doesn't help the calculus at all, but the arithmetic is enough of a challenge, right? So let's go with that way. So with this one, four minus x squared is quantity squared. Um, there's no use substitution that's gonna help us out here, so we really have no other choice but then just to foil out the four minus x squared squared. And so by the usual FOIL method, if we do that, uh, we end up with 16, which is 4 squared. We're going to get negative 8x squared plus x to the fourth dx, like so. And then the, the, the typical power rule comes into play right now. Um, I'm actually going to take the pi out as well, so we get 2 pi right here. Um, and so we're going to get 16x minus 8 thirds x cubed plus x to the fifth over 5 as we go from 0 to 2. Now notice that when you plug in the 0, um, all these multiples of x's are just going to go to 0. So arithmetic with 0, which is really, really the nice part there. Um, when we plug in the 2, on the other hand, uh, there is some effort that's going to happen there. You're going to get 16 times 2, which is 32. Um, you're going to get 8 thirds times 2 cubed, which is itself 8. And then we're going to get 2 to the 5th, which is 32. That sits above 5. Um, and all, I mean, we can times the 8s together right here and end up with 64 over 3. Uh, but then we just are left with adding some fractions together. And, and as that's just uh, tedious but trivial arithmetic, I'm going to skip over the details. Um, and you can check this yourself. When you add these together, you're going to end up with 512 pi over 15 as the volume of this solid here. So in this example, some of the things to look out for is that in order to determine the region that is being revolved, you might have to find these implicit boundary points that were intersections. We've seen things like that before when we talk about area between the curves. Um, also, you might want to use symmetry to help you simplify the integral calculations, particularly that, um, the, that arithmetic you see at the very end of the integral.